Smokers, this ain't no jokers. Look at the stock market, guys. It is up again today. I mean, it is green day after green day in the stock market. It's ridiculous right now. S&P 500 up another 1.31% here today. NASDAQ over 9,000. Who would ever thunk they would see NASDAQ over 9,000 this year, okay? Maybe in future years, yeah, but I mean, to get back over 9,000 this year, that is unbelievable. The public account is up nearly $25,000 today. Just one of my stock market accounts. That's ridiculous. I could have never like dreamt the stuff like what in the world is going on out there the nasdaq is now listen to this okay think about everything that has transpired over the past year and specifically over the past few months right the nasdaq is now up year to date yes you heard me right it is up year to date i mean you couldn't make this stuff up this is just ridiculous okay the nasdaq in the past one year is up almost 15 percent Think about that, up almost 15% with the fact that the, the economy has gone from you know being in a very good place over the past year to basically being in just a, a messy, messy place. I mean, that's just unbelievable, right? The S&P 500, I know people say, well, the NASDAQ's most few tech stocks, and some of these tech stocks are holding up pretty well. True, and some of them are, okay? About one out of 10 tech stocks is actually doing really good and benefiting from this. The other nine out of 10 are doing bad. S&P 500, the majority of these companies are being hurt, okay? Year to date, the, the, the S&P 500 is down less than 10% now. And for the past one year, the S&P 500 is now officially up 1.37%. Think about that for a moment. Corporate earnings have fallen through the floor. Unemployment rates have skyrocketed. GDP is on the biggest declines we've seen in a long, long time. Corporations, just to make it through, have taken out crazy levels of debt, and some at some pretty decently high interest rates, and yet the S&P 500 is actually up in the past one year. You can't make this stuff up. This deserves to have its own movie. Oh my goodness, guys. I mean, literally, you could you could go through any economist, you could ask any like stock market expert, you know, last year at this time, and, and tell them the whole scenario was gonna play out the way it was gonna play out. And I can guarantee you every single stock market investor, famous ones, non-famous ones, every single hedge fund manager would say there's no way the stock market would be up with all that that would have transpired. And yet here we are are with the S&P 500 now officially up in the past one year. It is unbelievable. Record 20.5 million jobs lost in April as unemployment rate jumps to 14.7%. Keep in mind the Great Recession, the unemployment rate jump, jumped as far as the government one, uh, just a little over 10%. So this is you know dramatically worse. And it'll probably get a little bit worse over the next few weeks before starting to hopefully bounce back a little bit, okay? One in five American workers has filed for unemployment benefits since mid-March. Since mid-March, okay? Now, some people like to look at what's called the quote-unquote real unemployment rate, okay? I've always heard a lot about this over time. So people say, don't actually look at the government-provided one. Talk about the real unemployment rate, okay? Okay, we can do that. The real unemployment rate soars past 24.9%, and the U.S. has now lost 33.5 million. M -m 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 million jobs. That is incredible, okay? And meanwhile, we're looking at a market that's just all green. And it's not just like the US market. Look at the EU. Look at Asia. I mean, all these markets are green, 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 okay? And, and this is this is frustrating a lot of people. Even, you know, it's frustrating longs like myself that have the majority of our wealth actually invest in the stock market. We're kind of feeling some kind of way about this, right? Uh, people that are on the sideline, they completely and don't have any money in the stock market. They're definitely, definitely feeling some kind of way about this watching the market go up and up every day. I mean, so people are blaming this on, on a few different things. Some people are blaming this market uptrend uh, on stimulus checks and people like getting the stimulus checks and putting them in their Robinhood accounts because they can't really like spend it. There's nowhere to spend it. So they're like putting it in their Robinhood account or, or, or whatever account they have and they're like, oh, let me just, you know, invest this money. Some people are blaming it on the Fed and the Fed, you know, and their quote unquote printing of money and it's just, you know, flooding money out there in the market and that's why the stock market's going up. Some people are saying, well, it's just the rich, the rich 
rich need somewhere to put money. They're, they're afraid of inflation, so they're just going to buy stocks. And, and so, you know, everybody's blaming on anything. And the fact is, I don't even know anymore, guys. I don't even know anymore. Who knows why the market just keeps going up? I mean, it doesn't matter what comes out for bad news. The corporate earnings are, are trash right now. Unemployment rates are, you know, it doesn't matter. There's nothing that can be said at the moment, at least. You know, things could change very quickly, but at the moment, it doesn't matter. We're getting every piece of bad news you could ever possibly get to lower a stock market, and it literally doesn't matter. They could Unemployment rate could be 30% tomorrow, and somehow the market wouldn't go down. That's just where the market's at right now. It's just in a, in a, in a place where it's just, I don't know, it's just going up and up and up. There's nothing that can, you know, and the stock market goes the other way sometimes where it doesn't matter what good news can come out. The stock market just wants to go down. That happens all the time, guys. Literally, like that happens all the time. Like we'll get into a market that's so ugly that it, the market will look at everything with a negative lens and it doesn't matter what's happening in the stock market. It doesn't matter what happened with corporate earnings. The market's going down. It happens like that sometimes. We're just on the flip side of this, okay? So what I really want to talk about, now we understand what's going on in the market, right? We understand that the market is super hot right now. We know that, right? So what to do in the market right now and what to not do in this type of stock market? I want to kind of give you guys a few pieces of advice in my personal opinion because I'm seeing some people doing some things out there that I'm like, okay, be a little careful with that. And so I want to kind of share my thoughts there. So I hope you guys enjoy this. As always, make sure you smash the thumbs up and uh, buy a cyber truck. You know, that's all I ask for you just for watching this video. Just buy a cyber truck and hit the thumbs up. It's not that hard, okay? Number one, don't FOMO buy this market, okay? If FOMO, by the way, for those of you guys who don't know, it's a fear of missing out. And this is what happens in, in not just the stock market, but any asset prices where people see them continuing to go up and up and up and up. People start to think about, I, I, gotta, I just got to get into that. I just got to get in it, man. Let me just throw my money in it. Let me just throw my savings in it because it just keeps going up. Everybody's making so much money and I just got a FOMO buy. And, and you know, it, it, it's an expression that really got popular when uh, Bitcoin kept going up. I think that was uh, December of 2017, I want to say, somewhere around there. Bitcoin and all the cryptos kept going up like crazy, kept going up like crazy. And like people started buying Bitcoin and didn't even know what the heck a Bitcoin was or or just all the cryptos in general. And it was just a, it was a crazy time in that asset prices and you know we can definitely worry about something like that happening in this type of stock stock market so don't FOMO buy and I understand you know you see your neighbor over there and he's like oh yeah man my stocks are up big I'm making money like crazy okay and then you got to get together with your family and your brother's like oh yeah man I just made five thousand dollars on stocks today and you're like Ugh, okay whatever and you see the public accounts up nearly twenty five thousand dollars today and you just see all this positivity in, in terms of the market Markets, you see the NASDAQ up almost 15% year to date. You're looking at all this and it, it can lead to FOMO. It absolutely can lead to FOMO where you just start feeling like, gosh, I just got it. I just got to put my money in. I just got to do it here today, right now. This is the moment because everybody's making money. And I'm just saying like, that's not the right approach, okay? That is not the right approach at all to this market. You don't want to just, you know, throw money out there and FOMO buy because yeah, I've just seen it time and time again. People who FOMO buy any asset price are always the ones that get hurt the worst, okay? You gotta know what you're doing. You gotta know what you're looking for. And if you're just throwing money in, uh, usually it's a big mistake, okay? Number two, I think I got five total for you guys here today. Number two, do buy a stock if the valuation is good, okay? So the stock market right now, mostly stocks are, 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 in my opinion, overvalued considering the type of market we're in, the type of uncertainty we have, the type of uh, balance sheets these companies have now, which is most of them have a lot worse balance sheets, let's put it that way, than they had literally just two or three months ago. The earnings is, is you know, it's just complete trash compared to what it was. But there are some stocks that the valuations do line up. It's very few and far between, but do buy a stock if you love the company and the valuation is right, okay? You guys know I spent a little bit of money yesterday. I bought some, you know, Berkshire Hathaway stock. Just a little bit, just a little bit of Berkshire Hathaway stock, okay? So 99% plus of these stocks are, are what I call NAS right now, okay? Where it's just like, if you're investing in them, you're probably buying at an overvalued valuation considering the, the, the real market uncertainty and the fact that we don't know what the heck is gonna go on over the next three to six months. Uh, and uh, heck, we don't even know what's going on over the next one to two years. It's just the, 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 the picture out there is so cloudy, you can't see through it. You can hope there's light on the other side, but really, if you're, if you're putting money 
in, in most of these stocks right now, especially these ones that have gone up tremendously, right, from the lows, which some of these stocks are up 100% plus from the March lows. If you're putting money in them, it's just a cloudy picture. The fact is you could, you could hope everything bounces right back, but that might not be what happens, okay? So 99% of these stocks right now are NAS, and maybe 1% or less than 1% of these stocks are yeses right now. And, and that's the advantage to being a stock picker and know what you're looking for in the market because you can identify some opportunities in the market that are actually good long-term buys here but it's very few and far between. Like, let me just make that very clear. Most of these stocks are at very dangerous levels considering the, the, the type of market uncertainty we have, the type of, you know, economic unclearness we have. Number three of these five is don't have high expectations for the next two to three years if you are buying index funds. So usually people buy in index funds, they put money in index funds, which usually if they're putting money in an index, index fund, it's just something to track the S&P 500, right? So they're putting money into this index fund in hopes that they'll get eight to 10% on their money per year or something like that. And I'm here to tell you, you know, if you're putting your money in an index fund, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. You know, you're free to do whatever you want to do. So in terms in terms of index funds, don't have that expectation of eight to 10% over the next few years, in my personal opinion, because at the end of the day, you know, outside of a scenario where corporate earnings bounce right back in 2021, outside of that scenario, you're probably not gonna get those type of gains because S&P 500, a lot of what it moves on is not just like hope and, you know, uh, hoping that things will be good and inflation fears and things like that. It also moves on the fact that, you know, whatever analysts believe are gonna be the earnings for the S&P 500 as a total. And so outside of a scenario where things come back super strong, you know, don't have that very high expectations for your index funds and in terms of growing money, okay? Number four, and this is a big one for a lot of the dividend investors out there and people that are individual stock pickers in general, don't expect dividend stocks to return in 2020 if they cut their dividends, okay? Uh, basically, a lot of companies have cut dividends out there. A lot of companies that usually pay dividends and pretty consistently have had to cut them. And it's not because these companies have made poor decisions necessarily. Necessarily. It's not because these are bad companies. It's just because it, we've gotten hit by a once in a hundred year event and they've had to cut their dividend. There's just really no, no, no choice for them. A lot of these stocks, if there was a normal recession scenario, uh, they, they could easily still continue to pay out that dividend, but some of them just have had a cut. Don't expect these companies to return their dividend this year, okay? And maybe not even next year. Maybe 2022 you're looking at. For instance, let me give you an example of one of the dividend stocks I hold. I hold a lot of different companies that, that pay dividends. One of them, let me give you an example of this. Wind Resorts, right? Wind Resorts, obviously they had to close their, their Macau properties, a Macau business, even though they've opened them back up, it's down significantly, right? Their Las Vegas properties are supposed to open up back up sometime soon, sometime this month, uh, but we know those properties have been closed for an extended period of time. And the companies cut their dividend to zero, which saves them about $100 million a quarter. So it's not like it's a small amount of money. This is a large, large amount of money, okay? In my opinion, Wind Resorts will pay a dividend at the earliest, at the earliest again in 2021, but it could be till 2022. In order for, there's no way they're paying a dividend in 2020 in my opinion. Why? Because there's no way their properties are gonna be packed in the, the EBITDA from the properties are gonna be anywhere remotely close to where they were. I just don't see that scenario. I mean, unless everybody just, magically wants to go on trips right away again, I, I, don't, I don't really foresee that. Remember, it's not just fears about people getting sick themselves, it's fears about what if I get it and give it to someone that's at risk, okay? So there's that whole fear out there. So at the end of the day, in my opinion, winning resorts will not bring their dividend back to until 2021 at the earliest, if not 2022. And I have this peg for a lot of stocks I hold. I mean, almost all the stocks I hold that have cut dividends, I have no plans, and in my opinion, for them to bring back dividends this year. It's just super unrealistic. And so if you are you have these hopes that, oh yeah, you know, Carnival Cruise Line is gonna bring back their dividend this year, dream on, okay? Dream on, it's not happening. Maybe 2021, probably not so realistic either. 2022, yeah, I can definitely see a lot of these companies bringing their dividends back. And then it's gonna be fun again, okay? And number five, I just wanna bring this up again, don't FOMO buy, okay? Don't FOMO buy this market. Make sure you know what you're looking into and all those sorts of things, okay? I have some free resources linked for you guys down there in the description. One is called How to Outperform the Stock Market. Another one basically tells you a little bit about my story and kind of the private group. Another one I think is, uh, you know, mistakes to avoid in the stock market right now. Uh, all those are free down there in the description area, so make sure you check out those. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video as always. Make sure you smash a thumbs up and leave me a comment on what your opinion is on the stock market right now and what 
you're doing in the stock market. And, and by the way, if you think about shorting, or buying put options, just be careful. It's, it's tough to fight the Fed, trust me, it's tough to fight those guys. Thank you for watching and have a great day.